to share a little bit and then we get to continue with the service. Let me open my Bible, Judges 7.10. Okay, this is a story about um, Gideon. This is a story about Gideon. Uh, the Bible says when you read Judges in chapter 6, it talks about when the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God, and then God judged them and allowed the Midianites to... Um, to rule them and oppress them. Then they cried out to God. So God got Gideon and sent him to go to the children of Israel and lead them and deliver them. Uh, let me just get the verse that I want. Okay. Um... So the Bible says in chapter, go to Judges 6, 10 first. Eh? He says, and I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abizrite, Abiz and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites who used to come and steal their food. Eh? So in verse 12, the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to Gideon, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of Vela. 13. And Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from, from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. When you continue, um, 16, the Bible says, Lord say, The Lord said unto him, Surely I will, will, I'll be with you and you will smite the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, then Gideon said, if I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. And then he went, brought in um, some unleavened cakes, and then um, the angel of the Lord took the flesh, the unleavened cakes, lay them on the rock, poured the broth, and then he put his staff on that food, and then fire came and consumed. Judges chapter 6, verse 21. Um, Gideon, Gideon was called by God to come and deliver the children of Israel, to give them a word of what God was saying in the times that they were going under oppression. And one of the things that Gideon said when he was approached by the angel of God. He said, there is that which we have heard that God did for our fathers. Where is he now? Why are we going through this kind of oppression? So he knew the acts of God. He knew what God had said concerning the children of Israel. He heard what God did in those times. Yet at this point, they were being oppressed by the Midians, Midianites. And God was telling him, I want you to go rescue my people. And... When you read the Bible, it says he, he asked God to assure him that he is with him. And God proved twice to him that he's actually with him and he's actually sent him. Are we together? So, so now when we get to Judges chapter 7, where I want to put my concentration on, God had instructed Joshua, I mean Gideon, to take the army, so he was going to attack the other camp. And while they were at it, God told Gideon, 
out of these men. Tell those who are afraid to go back. Then the Bible says around uh, 22,000 of them went. And then 10,000 remained. So there were about 32. God told Gideon, these people are too many. So if I give you victory, they will feel that it's by their hand that they were delivered. So God told him, I want you to reduce this number. So the first thing you'll do, tell those who are afraid to go back. 22,000 went. And then again, he told them when they got by a, a place of drinking water, he told them, I want you to observe these people. Look at how they drink water. So there are those who went on their knees and they were drinking, and there were those who were drinking very fast. Um, it says, so he brought the people, Judges 7, 5, he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps. You know how a, dro a dog drinks water? Like that. So he said, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. Give me six. And the number of those who lapped, that is putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. So when you read down, those who got down on their knees to drink water, the Lord told them, send those people away. So out of around 32,000 army of people, Gideon remained with about 300 people that he went to war. Are we together? Are we together? And God told him specifically, this number you have to work on it and reduce it. Why? Because at the end of the day, these people need to understand that it is I, the Lord, who is doing this. And it's not because they have numbers. This is why they are defeating these people. Are we together? So uh, when you continue reading, I can give us an assignment. When you continue reading, still Gideon had, still Gideon was afraid. And then God told him, okay, you can get someone, go to the other camp and get to hear what they are saying. Get to hear what they are saying. Um, verse 10 of, I'll just read through, allow me to read the verses and then I get to explain what God has put in my heart. So Judges 7, 10, it says, but if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, 11. And you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outpost of the army men, armed men who were in the camp. Verse 12, can we read together? What does the Bible say? Uh-huh. As numerous as? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh huh. Uh huh. So his companion answered and said, "This." This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, and a man of Israel. Into his hand, God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, God calls Gideon. Gideon questions God, why did I hear what you did by the miracles you did to our, you know, forefathers? Why are we still in the wilderness at this point, yet you did these things. Then God said, I still want to send you. I am paraphrasing. And then he puts God to the test, two tests, and God proves himself as God. But still God says, I want you to attack those people, but you can go and check and hear what these people are saying. 
And then when he goes, he hears someone talking and they're saying, there is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, into his hand, God has delivered Midian. So when he went, when they went into the camp of Midian, they realized that this people, yet he had belittled himself when God has sent him. Are we together? Are we together? I'm trying to figure out the topic I have, but I want to talk about, um, should I say, our relationship with God, our relationship with God. How do we relate with God? Do we relate him as a father? Do we relate with him as the creator of the universe? How do we relate with him? And I want to talk about God as a friend. God as a? God as a? God as a friend. Many times we get instruction from God or instruction from God meaning the Bible or meaning our leaders give an instruction and we all perceive or we all take instructions differently. Depending on where we are spiritually, depending on some of the things we are going through, we take these instructions differently. And when it narrows down to an individual, you you and I need to get to a place where you can go to God and talk to God about this circumstance, either to get clarity or for God to shed some light or God to speak more to say something. Now, Gideon was very genuine with God. Gideon asked God, concerning our situation, you did so much before. Why is it that you're not doing it right now? Why is it that we are not seeing the miracles that were spoken happening now. The only thing we know right now that we are being oppressed by the Midianites. The Bible says that they would come and steal their things. This is why when the angel appeared to Gideon, he found him at, a, at, at his father's place where he was hiding and, you know, and, and threshing because these people would come and steal their produce. So his question was, where is God? Why are you not doing what you have been doing? And as much as he was an Israelite, he still asked God, if you're sending me, I want you to prove. God proved twice. For God to have told him to go down the camp, it means they had fear. And he needed a reassurance from God that when you go to fight, I need you to understand, it's not about the numbers. Because maybe, maybe he had his trust in the numbers. When God slashes the number, he realizes, okay, it's really not about the army. It's not about how many people we are. So what exactly is God doing in this situation? Then God tells him, can you go down there? Go down there and listen to the conversation. And the Bible says, uh, when he heard what these people said, these people trembled by the fact that the children of Israel were around them and they carried the presence of God. And the Bible says now when um, Gideon went to attack, they fought against themselves. And then they were able to defeat. So my question is for us today. Um, there's something Elder Ezekiel ministered last Wednesday while we were still in prayer and fasting and it caught my heart. And he was talking about, yes, we have prayed. Yes, we have fasted. Are we at a place where, you know, when we come here, we have been praying for like two hours and then you go home, pray two hours, go home for the whole of last week except Friday. And you have been talking to God, talking to God, talking to God. Now, we at, at, are at a place where or you need to get to a place where you also get to sit and hear what God is saying. See, communication is two-way. So after you talk to him, because you know, when you pray and fast, my expectation is that I get to hear from God and I get a direction from God. Is that true? So after I prayed and fasted, I need to be at a place where I'm also watching that which I labored in prayer, in fasting, to put my heart at a place to read. You know, prayer and fasting is specifically for you to come to a place where you can hear God. See you? So, and, and you are able to respond to the instruction of God. So your flesh goes down, your spirit goes up. So after this period of prayer and fasting, where am I as a person? Am I still 
sitting to hear the voice of God. And when I hear the voice of God, am I at a place where I can sit with him and converse? So uh, after I have done that, am I at a place where I can now sit, talk to God, and tell him, okay, here you said this, here you told me this, here you told me this. This, I don't get it. Here, I don't understand. This situation, your word says this. Why am I still saying this? This is exactly what Gideon told God. You have been doing great things. You delivered our people from Egypt. We have had, we have had, we have had. I have had the God of TOT. I have had God doing this in TOT. I have had this. Now, Lord, help me understand where I am. Help me understand what I'm doing. Help me understand why this has not yet manifested. The Bible says that Abraham is called a friend of God. You know that verse? You know that verse? It should be in the New Testament. Check somewhere in James. The Bible calls Abraham a friend of God. You know when you have friends, I'm talking about real friends, okay? When you have real friends, because friends are diverse. But when you have real friends, the people you genuinely hang out, the people that know some of the postings you make on Facebook, kuna ya ukweli, kuna ya uongo, kuna enyesi kuwako na umepiga home. The people that genuinely know you, you can actually sit down with them and tell them what is in your heart. Is that true? The people that know me as Maureen, not me as the minister, I can sit down with them and I tell them, you know, this week it's been crazy. I've had A, B, C, D. I'm trusting God for A, B, C, D. And I am at A, B, C, D. So the people who are genuine to you, who are called friends, you should be able to have a conversation. They should be able to honestly tell you something without fear. If you have a friend, someone you call a friend, and you cannot tell them the truth, they are not friends. If you have a friend and they cannot tell you the truth, they are not? Yes, because if you love someone, you will want the best for them. And you will be genuine. And you will tell them as it is and try and figure out a solution if you have. Is that true? So, I'm explaining that so that the Bible says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So, Abraham believed. Do you believe? Do you believe? Yes. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Yes. So, God has accounted you as righteous, didn't you? So but the Bible says, because Adam believed in God, it was accounted to him for righteousness, and then he was called a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Are you a friend of God? Are you sure? Do you have genuine conversations? Do you have genuine conversations with God? Or do you just go, tell God what you want, remind him what is not done, and you had told him to do it this, this particular time. And then ask him, where are you? Where are you? You know, there are some prayers when you hear, they are usually very interesting. At times it's even safer to pray in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> there are some prayers that are very, very interesting. But the thing is, as long as you're genuine with God, is the most important. And God is saying, you can come to a place where you have a conversation. The book of Isaiah, the Bible says, come let us reason together, let us talk. Because in that book he was saying, there may be a distance, that was, um, the Bible talks about, uh, though your sins as I've read us and all that, sin may bring in separation, but he says still come. But now he's not saying come, he's saying I'm in you. He says I'm within you. 
Can we have a conversation? Can we talk? Abraham, being called a friend of God, was able to negotiate with God. God said, I cannot, take me back to Genesis. God said, I cannot do this. I cannot destroy if I have not talked to Abraham, who is a friend of God. Praise the Lord. So God counted Abraham's, um, he wanted to know Abraham's response towards what he was going to do. And that's why he went through Abraham and told Abraham, you know what, I am going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Ab Abraham started negotiating. Abraham started negotiating with God. Um, put me in context where God says um, he wanted to inform Abraham before the destruction. I want you to put me in that context. Can God get to a place whereby he says, before I do this thing, I want to talk to my daughter. I want to talk to my son. Before I take him through a process, I want to talk to him to understand why they are going to go through this. I entirely believe that God speaks in so many ways through people, through diverse ways that we have been taught. Then the men rose, Genesis 18, 16, then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Next. Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Go back to 18. So God says, go back to Genesis 18, 18. God says, am I going to do something without talking to Abraham about it? And then he says, since, can you be able to compress 17 and 18? Compress for me 17 and 18. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So, can God count on you and God says, you know, this is my son, this is my daughter. I am entrusting them in this day and age to fulfill this where I have called them. So, before I do something in Kenya, before I do something in the face of the earth, I must tell them, are you getting me? God says, Abraham is a great and mighty nation because out of him Israel was born. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So because he had an assignment with Abraham, he said, I have to tell Abraham what I'm going to do. So that is in the know-how. And Abraham begins negotiating and negotiating in terms of number. What if there are 50 people? Are you still going to destroy? What if you get to 10? Are you still going to destroy? So he got to a place where he could actually talk to God as a friend to negotiate on behalf of people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The more we grow in God, the more our relationship with him becomes solidified. The more we get to understand who God is. The more you have a relationship where you can even talk to God and tell God, why is this thing happening? You know, there are many things, there are many things when they happen I have had the privilege. When many things happen, God speaks to me in advance. He tells me this, do this. He can give an instructions. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want to raise people. I want you to watch over this one. I want you to look at this, see how they're growing. God gives instructions. So that when something is happening, it does not get you by surprise. Praise the Lord. And God desires we get to that place where when he wants to do something, he can come to you and talk to you about it. 
and even asks you, what do you think about this? After all, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ, right? So we are not looking at the scripture that says, who knows the mind of God, who can advise him? No, we have the mind of Christ. So we can speak, we can tell God, we can negotiate, we can question. Praise the Lord. If you're sleeping, say amen and wake up. Yani, you're sleeping and I can see right through your spectacles. <laughs> it's only 12.30. <laughs> Please wake up. So, God wants to bring us to a place where he can bank on you and say, you know, Jonathan is my friend. Before something happens to his family, I need to inform him. Before something is happening in the nation, I need to let him know. Before even someone falls ill in the family, I need to let him know. Perhaps he can stand in the gap and pray and intervene so that God comes in to do something. Are we together? Are we together? And that is why one of the things we are very keen, um, our Father in the Lord says so many times, is that Everyone needs to grow to a place where now you can hear God for yourself. Of course, we are operating under the grace of our Father in the house. But God desires we get to that place. You know, the Bible says you need to go grow into the full stature of Christ. So God desires us to grow to that place where you can converse with him, you can talk to him. You know, you can ask God, why do you want to destroy these people? They are too rushes. Why is this happening in my family? But I'm here and I'm standing in the gap. And the desire of God is that we can get to that place to negotiate. You know, it is not wrong, it is not wrong to ask God questions or to ask God to confirm. Do you know that? There are some of us, you can have a dream, you don't like it, you don't understand it, and you're there. So what do you do about it? Either you just pray about it, you leave it without the understanding, or you send for interpretation and you still leave it. You can always go back to God. I like Gideon. Because even as he's being praised as a mighty man of valor, at that point, his mightiness was not being revealed. Praise the Lord. He still wanted to find out from God, what exactly do you want to do? Because we have been, we have seen, we have heard of what you're doing. But where we are right now with the Midianites, it is not so, according to what we've heard. And he keeps putting God to the test and asking God, okay, confirm this for me. Confirm this for me. Let there be dew. Let it be dry. These are the tests that he put God. To a level where God tells him, okay, then why don't you just go down there, listen to the conversation of those people, and get to understand where I have put you, what you have in you, and what you are able to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The fact that God has brought us here together, I believe God directs the footsteps of people. It is not by accident. There is a reason, there is an assignment, there is an alignment, there is a shedding off, and there is an acquiring of things in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. And because he has planted you here, we must be at a place where we can receive and partake from God. And if you are at a place where you do not see something happening that you desire to see, you can actually go to God and talk to him and ask him, okay, this happened. Why exactly is it like this? And I want to encourage us today. The same way we work out our salvation, the same way we seek God in prayer, is the same way we should strive to get into a place of relationship and friendship with God. So that number one, you are at a place where you can hear his voice, you can hear it clearly. 
So the number two, we are a prophetic people. Prophetic people get direction. So we can, we can have an understanding. You know, if I wake up in the morning, if your boss tells you, calls you at, at six in the morning and tells you today don't come to work and disconnects, you'll be very uncomfortable, right? But if your, ball call, your boss calls you and tells you to do, today do not come to work because of ABCD, this has happened, this has happened, we are fixing this in place, maybe you're in IT, we are having a change of this, 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 so report tomorrow so that you can work. You have understanding. Sendio? So it's different when you just get instruction and as compared to when you get instruction explain, with an explanation of what is happening that has necessitated that particular decision that has been made. Are we together? So when you understand what God is doing in a season in your life, when you have that understanding, you will be able to yield more to God and to surrender more to God because you have an understanding. Praise the Lord. For example, our father says, uh, between end of this year and next year, I'm releasing scholarships. You've applied and applied and applied and you're not getting. You can go to God and tell God, this is what has been said. And this is where I am. Help me understand the bridge. You will be able to know how to pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. For example, you've been praying concerning a promotion. You're trusting God. It's not yet materialized. You can still go back and, ne and negotiate with God and tell God, give me an understanding. This word was spoken. No name was mentioned. It was for everyone. I received as an individual. So why is it not yet manifesting in my life? So that God gives you an instruction on how to go about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My desire as your leader is that as you have an understanding of what God is doing, you will be able to yield more. You will be able to? What if you came here and God has not done something in your life for the last three years? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The last three years, you know you have faith, you believe in God. You have trusted God. But what you're believing God for three years, you've not seen it. What are you going to do? Are you going to say God is not in this place? Are you going to say that God loves other people more? Are you? No, you won't. So, when you go to God and pray and understand why you are where you are, you will know how to behave. There are people who walk by sight. So when you sit somewhere, you don't see God do something concerning your life. You're like, okay, maybe, maybe I am not called here. God desires above everything that we have a personal relationship with him. Praise the Lord. When God puts you somewhere, there are things he may be working on in your life before he gives you what he wants to give you. Some of us, if you're given what you're asking for, it might destroy you beforehand. Some of us, maybe that prayer item is what is keeping you saved. There are people who that prayer item is keeping you saved. If God will just answer like this. We will be searching for you on the earth. And you will be very busy. Yeah, you went home. You remember, do you want to drive, go see your mommy? You remember you went to that camp in M is called camp. Dunda, I mean, it's called what? That's why people go slide in the mud. It's called camp. Dunda, Dunda or Dunda? Camp Dunda. So you remember, there was a trip you have been desiring for years. 
And God has been faithful and answered your prayer. And now is the time you need to go. There are things God might withhold until he works on you as a person. There are breakthroughs God might withhold because if God would do it, you will step on our heads as your ground, as you walk and go. Are we together? So the most important thing is understanding why God is putting you in a season that you're in. And the understanding comes when you sit down and have a conversation with God. We have been in a 15-day prayer and fasting. Definitely I expect results. I don't expect a closed heaven. Okay? So when I expect a result, what is God saying? And if he's saying something I'm not understanding, can I ask him to shed more light to help me so that I embrace what he's saying? Hallelujah. Amen. Today I'm not saying receiving. Eh? Our father will come and say that. Eh? But can you, can, can God put, I have like three minutes to go. Can God put himself in a place where he will say, I want to consult Gloria concerning this matter that I want to do in her family. I need to consult her. And then God drops a word in your spirit. You either pray for it or you ask God some more or you, you know, Can we be counted as friends of God? Can we have, can we get to a place where we actually have those conversations? We have been taught by our father many times that friendships are expensive. Sindio? Any type of friendship are expensive. They need an investment. They need time. They need in different circumstances for you to be there for them people and reach out to them. They're quite costly. Are you willing to count the cost for your friendship with God? Are you willing to take some time and sit and listen to hear him talk? Are you willing to hear his reason for what he is doing? So I want to encourage us, even as we close the year, trusting God that going forward, our ears will be able to hear clearly. Our eyes will see and perceive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So that you will know. So that nothing catches you by surprise. So that some things you can pray and arrest in the spirit. So that some things will not send you in fear and running and packing. And denouncing some things by the words of your mouth because fear engulfed you. But God will help us. Praise the Lord. We said next year we are raising ministers. Sindio. So it means what your father does. You should be able to, because Jesus says, what I see my father do, so you should be able to do. A month ago, I was listening to the teaching of, um, and I think I told him, I was listening to the teach of, teaching of uh, communion, Holy Communion, um, that was done in February. It is already in the books that are being sold, the Holy Communion. I don't know how many have ever gone back to listen to that teaching again. Have you ever listened to that teaching again? Amabu Nangoja, to Revelation and next Sunday, what is he teaching this time? The word you want flesh and bones to chew. We have very deep teachings that our father has done. Sindio? And I was listening to the communion one. And I was going to do Holy Communion in Eldoret. And I, I watched the whole thing I watched. And later I realized that teaching is very deep. And to be honest, I'm not even at a place where I can actually replicate it right now. So when we are saying next year we're going to raise ministers, eh? Shake your neighbor a little bit. Ask them, as a minister, what DNA are you going to carry? What teaching are you going to give? You know, one time we went with someone, we went with a group of people to a mission. 
And then one, one of us, this is a long time ago, eh? a long time ago, more than five years, <laughs> stop laughing. And one person stood up and said, you don't need to get born again to go to heaven. To a car team. And I was the leader together with another lady called Fidis. And I'm doing that damage was great. Because now two people can speak different things. You look like confused elements. It was a hard one. Imagine someone stands and says that statement and you, you're there. You don't know where to put your face or to hide. And yet you are called a leader. Praise the Lord. So one of the things we need even to trust God is understanding. That is, we have very deep teachings here. Can you go before God and tell God, you know, God, that day the man of God taught, I slept. I did not understand. I don't know if it's the spirit of slumber or lack of understanding. I don't know, but I didn't get it. So that God can shed light so that we get to move together. Praise the Lord. He, one of the things he said is that you will find every miracle or supernatural thing God does, especially healing, there is a scripture that he gets, that he gets a revelation that empowers him. So even you, when you receive, let's say if it's healing or restoration, there's a scripture you stand on based on the revelation you got and you run with it and you tell yourself because of this word, it has to work. Right? So we have to get to a place where we have that understanding. And if you don't, you can ask God. You can tell God, God, this is my spiritual father. This teaching, I did not get it. Or maybe my spirit is not yet in agreement with it. Because people can get to that level on some revelations. See, that's the truth. So you tell God, help me understand. Open up my mind. So that whatever it is coming forth, I will have understanding. And then it begins taking form and working in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I came to challenge us even as we close the year. We are closing the year, yes. But we are already also in the process of raising ministers. These ministers ought to know who they are talking about or who they advocate for. Knowing is not just reading and realizing, okay, this is what God says. No. Coming to a place where you have a revelation and an encounter with God. There are things God does in your life. There are circumstances that God has done things in your life that you will never forget. Kama ujafika hapo, ujapata revelation. You need to go and pray. But there are things God will do in your life. Either he saved you from a situation and you really saw the hand of God or he came through for you with your children or your family or your spouse, your individual life. There's how God did something that planted in you and you can attest for sure there is a God in heaven. We all need to get to that place. And we all need to invest so that our spiritual lives grow. Praise the Lord. I am looking forward to, I'm looking forward to a time where when, even the Bible says that I should be able to defend this gospel I preach. I should be able to defend why I believe in healing. I should be able to defend why I believe that God needs to give his children finances to finance their revival. I should be able to explain my belief system. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I should be able to explain. Break it down for someone. Say, Lord, help me. To know you more, help me to have a relationship with you so that nothing catches me by surprise. And that is my encouragement for us today. That nothing will catch you by surprise. That God one day will be like, ah, let me talk to Maureen first. Before I do this, let me ask her. And then he considers what I tell him. 
Do you know God can actually consider what you have to say? Do you actually believe it? You know, our Father and the Lord many times when he talks about uh, prophecy, some things that God tells him, you can correct me if I say it wrongly, um, some things that God tells him, some things he says he creates in the Spirit for us. Because maybe he has not heard a voice, but he sees the need. Am I on track? Thank you. So, he creates them and declares and speaks them. And then God? So, God hears. Sindio, God and I'm scared. Then God and I let me do this thing. Because this is a mighty man of valor. This is my son. This one I have chosen him for this time to do this. So, I want my desires, I get to that place where God consults. God can talk to you. God can say, I want to do this concerning your family, concerning the nation, concerning the church of TOT, concerning this. This is how intercessors are born. I want to do this and I want to consult Timothy so that I hear what he wants to say. When we do this, we'll be able to stand in the gap for our families effectively. Because nothing will happen unless we have okayed it. Whether good or bad, yes, they can happen, but God will grant you understanding and show you a way out of what he's doing concerning the situation. Praise the Lord. So I want to challenge us today. Our sincerity with God, our friendship with God, that we can get to a place where one, we can be very genuine with God. We can be very honest with God. And we can wait on him to hear what he is saying. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God can say, I have found, not just someone, but I have found people in TOT that I will consult before I do something. That I will talk to them and figure out what they have to say. That I will talk to them concerning their lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage us. Work out just like Gideon would. And you would talk to God and you would negotiate with God. Be found at a place where you can talk to God and negotiate with God. Even in your situation. We are coming to a place where the man of God may not need necessarily to lay hands on you. You know there are people who say, Kile wa mikono hawaamini kitu kimefanyika. There are people, we say we have Jesus the healer line up here. We pray for you. And they are just comfortable waiting. When the man of God is done, go to the office. You're there. First one. Giving the protocol a hard time. Let me tell you, you can stretch your faith. You can stretch your faith to tap into what is there. Because the altar is powerful. There is grace on it. If you come even and pray here in the week, it's an open portal. You can feel it. You can feel it. So part of growing up would be, you don't have to tell the man of God your case personally. What if the days they will not be here? And you know, when you idolize someone, you make them a god, it is not good. And God can do stuff to take that person out either he goes on mission or not near or not answering so that you develop your faith. The man of God is there to lead you, to show you the way, to help you see how you access it. And then from there, you access and develop your relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because our desire is to see all of us grow. All of us be able to do a replication. I've been going through the many teachings that he has been, he's been doing all the time. And with time at times, you realize you don't even need anything new. You need to digest what you already have. You need to digest. It's heavy stuff. 
And the much he has already done can be enough to keep you going. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Smile at them again. Are they still smiling? Or are they waiting to hear you say, I receive? Growth is progressional. You keep growing. There's no time you'll say you are already there. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us to work out our salvation. Develop your friendship with God. Develop, you get to a place where you can talk to him. Where he's able to reveal himself to you, even concerning a situation. Because he can count on you on the substance that he has put in you and is at work. Where he says, I will consult concerning family. I'll consult. So even if someone says they want to go consult witchcraft or stuff, but God will be like, but they did not ask me. I have not talked to my servant. It cannot happen. Are we together? Are we together? Say, God help me to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. In Jesus' name. Amen. It was as simple as that.